Chapter 1. I see a darkness. Bad things can happen in the desert. Beneath the horned head graffitied on a burned and gutted building in Bombay Beach, the scrawled words read, It didn't always used to be this way. Too true, Izzy Ames thought, looking around at the mobile homes and a few houses lining unpaved streets beneath the dike that separated broken town from toxic sea. It didn't always used to be this way, and it would not be this way forever. Izzy, 25, long and lean, with a braid down her back, watched Cyrus Rivera stand from a crouch where he'd been fingering the soil he'd hauled to Bombay Beach in his Chevy Silverado. His jeans slid down over the waistband of his boxers, and he hitched his thumbs through his belt loops and turned to face her. The steep intelligence of his brow, his powerful nose and cheekbones, the stubble on his chin, a mouth that brooded, even in a smile, over a lawless array of teeth, and his eyes, irises the color of seaweed hid behind his shades. She'd once read that true hazel is rare, derived of a combination of pigments, Eumelanin, Pheomelanin. Cyrus reached for his canteen, tilted it to lips fuller than Izzy's. Rose, serpent, panther, falcon, and skull tattoos twined, pawed, and flew. And in the case of the skull, hovered like a reminder of the fate that is certain for everyone. The skull reminded Izzy of something else, too. Of the way that sometimes, her love for Cyrus felt like a different kind of death. Even after almost nine years together, she found herself slayed by the sight of him. She wasn't the only one. A man that beautiful, that skilled, disturbed people somehow. Especially out here in the desert, where the beauty that existed was raw and harsh and often hidden. But Cyrus could build almost anything out of anything. Could make almost anything grow. When you looked at him, you felt you could do these things too. You might even start to glow like he did. He nodded his head once at Izzy, his lips softening and peeking into a smile. And she dipped her chin in response, feeling her own lips lift and her nipples tingle. I love you, she mouthed. Not long till they'd be in bed again, their favorite pastime. But it wasn't just the sex Izzy yearned for. She felt their love manifested in sleep, as dreams, in the words they whispered to each other like handing a candle back and forth when the desert encroached darkly outside of their shack. Now her womb pinched with desire. Izzy Cyrus and their friends Seth and Nephi White had gathered in Bombay Beach to tend to the three sisters' community garden they planted. Cyrus had the idea, a gift for the children. He, Izzy, Seth, and Nephi came from Salton City, Slab City, and Salvation Mountain. Not here. But no one had built any gardens for them. They had, all four, grown up on the shores of the man-made lake where movie stars once played golf. Water skied, boat raced, and fished for artificially introduced croaker. Slowly, due to pollution, increased salinity, and an overgrowth of dead algae that cut off oxygen and produced hydrogen sulfide gas. The Salton Sea deteriorated into an anoxic cesspool surrounded by mountains, where the military once conducted bombing test operations. Selenium, the poisonous trace mineral present in agricultural drainage, washed into the sea and ravaged brains, beaks, hearts, livers, wings, legs, feet, and skeletons of aquatic birds, and kidneys, ovaries, spines, head, mouth, and fins of fish.